Javon Hadley is in the portal. We probably could have done this video last week, but I think we were waiting to hear if there were any twists and turns, any developments. What we decided today is a good time to discuss Javon Hadley's game and where he might end up playing college basketball next season. He's played three years in college. He started his career at Northeastern. Why is that notable? Well, because he played with Tyson Walker. Uh, He did not play the 2021-2022 season. He returned after transferring to Colorado for two years. Two pretty good years at Colorado. Now, Colorado is a good basketball team this year. Had a lot of talent. Cody Williams was a superstar. Uh, Simpson was a star in the backcourt. They had great center play as well, a great frontcourt play in De Silva. Uh, I think Javon Hadley really, to me, was their fourth best player. And that's not meant as an indictment of what he may be capable of. It's a really talented basketball team, and he played a really important role on a talented basketball team. He averaged 11.6 points per game, six rebounds, 2.4 assists, 1.2 steals, does a little bit of everything on the court, shoots it well from three, 42% from three on the season. With that said, Carr, only 1.3 attempts. You probably would have liked to see that number be a little bit higher, but he shot really well from the free throw line, 84%. And most importantly, he never came off the floor. He played 30, 34 minutes for this Colorado team, started all 36 games that he played in this season. Um, pretty good target. Like If you're looking for a guy who could potentially come in and start, I think he would start for a lot of programs. I think he could be a role player on great teams. I think he could be a star on some not-so-great teams. And right now, it sounds like he's down to two schools. What are you hearing? Yeah, so uh, first off, with Javon Hadley, uh, I obviously you want to see that three-point attempts mark go up. But just watching him, I do like his I, – I, I think he's a guy that could shoot more. I don't think he would shoot 40%. Obviously, those attempts go up. But, like, I think floor for him is like a 36% three-point shooter on more attempts. And that's me projecting a little bit here. But – for me, when I'm looking at where he would be, I think, doing best, I think it would honestly be taking the same role, maybe but a little bit more of what he had at Colorado and plugging that into another team. Just because I think being able to get 12 and 6 with good defense from fourth or fifth option on your basketball team while shooting good percentages from the line, free, you know, field three, all that with the defense until instilled in that size, athleticism, things he has, the tools he has. I think that could lead to some really good basketball teams and some winning basketball. With that said, it sounds like it's down to Iowa State and Michigan State right now. Iowa State, I believe, is in the lead from the last thing that I heard on this. Um, now, there's a connection here with Michigan State outside of the Tyson Walker. He actually played high school basketball with Trey Holloman. He's from Minnesota, Minnesota kid. Um, so he does. He has familiarity with current players on the Michigan State program and the Michigan State program in general. I know that they did get him on a Zoom call. Um, I'm not sure if an official visit like that or anything has been set up. But as of right now, it seems that the lead is Iowa State. Um, Iowa State did just have a 3-4 position kid transfer out. So, you know, certainly you look at a player like Hadley, I could see him in Iowa State system, surely. Um, I think that with Lipsy, Gilbert, the other guys in the full, Curtis Jones as well, having a guy like Hadley who's a defender and also can add some things offensively would certainly fit in that system. I also think that there's a glaring spot at the three spot for Michigan State where Hadley could be plug and play. Um, The thing is, if he's on Michigan State right now, he'd probably be Michigan State's second best player. Maybe even maybe even higher than that, depending on who you talk to. Um, but I, I think it'd be certainly a take for Michigan State, a player that we want. If he ends up being the only player that we get, that would be somewhat disappointing. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think it will be. I like I just because he's a target right now, I don't think that indicates this is the only player Michigan State will target. Um I think there's a lot of good here for Michigan state from like a, it's good that they're reaching out this early standpoint. Like I think even in the past, correct me if I'm wrong, when they have brought in portal guys, they weren't necessarily like on someone the first week into the off season. So the fact that they identified someone quickly and seem to have made a final list and are, you know, participating in like legitimate close the deal conversations with a guy who would start for them. That's a very good sign for a program where we were, Curious how Tom Izzo would approach this offseason. 
Now, we also have seen Michigan State go after guys and lose in this fashion before and then do nothing, like Jalen Bridges a couple years ago, Micah Parrish. It's like, try to get those two, didn't get them. Oh, well. That would scare me a little bit, and not to play full red flag here, because I don't think there's any negatives about this. There's not. They should try and get Hadley, and hopefully it happens for him. The red flag to me is like, are we only calling guys that played with our current players? Like, there's a lot of better players than Javon Hadley in the portal right now. (laughs) And, like, for Michigan State to only be rumored to be really seriously after one, and it just so happens to be the one that went to high school with Trey Holloman and his friends with Tyson Walker, yeah, it's a good connection. But does that does that give you the shivers like at all? Like, are we really just doing the in the family thing and that's it? Uh, it? It gives me massive shivers because right now Hadley's the only serious target right now for Michigan State. Now, like you said, that's not an awful thing. There could be other targets out there. Who knows? More players get into the portal. But there have been two players that have been targets so far, serious ones, or ones that at least Michigan State has reached out. That's Hadley. Obviously, the connections are there. And the other one is uh, Garrison, the big man from Oklahoma State. And the only, I don't even know if there's, I don't even know if there's actual real interest there. The only connection is that him and Jeremy Fears are good friends and they played at the McDonald's All-American game together. So like that's, if, that, if that's our strategy right now is we're going after people that we know or people that come from our area or are friends with our current players, I absolutely hate that strategy. I actually much, much rather prefer some players that our players don't know. Maybe even don't like. I just want talented players that fit. Um, and and this is not to say Hadley's not one of those guys. He is like Hadley is like we said. He's a, he's for sure a player we want. There's he plays at a, pl- a position right now that I think is a glaring need. Um, and he would be. An, I think he would also give the ability for Jay Nakins to bump up to the two and just have Hadley as our three. I think that that means something. That's good. With that said, the recruiting strategy of does he know our players? Did they play with them in high school? I I don't like that strategy. I, I want to look at the I want to look at the top twenty transfer rankings of all websites, major websites on three rivals, whatever you want to use, and I want I want to go off that. I want, I want the best. I want to go after the best guys. Yeah, it's a little scary. It's a little ominous. Again, he's a good player. This would be a good ad. The fact that that's the only priority is a little like, okay, Tom, there are a lot of other players here. Let's maybe maybe cast a wider net because you are Michigan State. You are a big-time program. A lot of players would be interested in if you picked up the phone and called them. Um, I'm also laughing. Shout out to our guy, Dylan Terpstra, who's in the Discord, D-Terp. Uh, he just made a Michigan State basketball offseason board because he was inspired by Davis Mosley, who was doing it for Michigan last night. Mich- Michigan is after a bunch of transfers, the Florida Atlantic guys – and uh, mostly put a board together just to track, like, who are all the transfers? We'll add names as they come in and out. Uh, Terp just did this for Michigan State. Javon Hadley is the only transfer listed, and then there's 13 different high schoolers listed. So just the the contrasted style of how these programs are approaching their offseason is always very interesting. Now, Michigan has to replace 13 guys. Michigan State needs to find one or two. Um, it just It's funny to me. Like, we're there's a lot of guys in the portal already, and – it's all eggs in the Hadley basket right now. It seems weird. Michigan State's one of the uh, currently one of the teams that has one of the greatest needs for the transfer portal uh, in the Big Ten, and they are currently the least active team in the in the Big Ten in the transfer portal. Well, I I think they're more active than Purdue. I'd say that it's a win. That's for a goddamn reason. Purdue's done. <laughs> Purdue's got some bigger things to do. Um, okay, back to Hadley's game real quick again. I think he's a very good player projecting fit here. I have some pretty serious concerns with what Michigan state would look like if he's your starting three next year that I'd like to just run by you. Um, Would you say like, would you say Malik Hall shot a lot of threes last season? Malik? No, not at all. Right. Like he, he really didn't shoot a lot of threes. Yeah. 61 three-pointers is how many uh, attempts Malik Hall attempted last season in uh, 1,000 minutes. 61 threes in 1,000 minutes. Javon Hadley in his career has attempted 55 threes in 1,800 minutes. 
of basketball. So I think that that 42% from three number is extremely misleading. He attempted 48 threes this year, mm-hmm. and he he was on the floor always. So that means he was never shooting threes. I mean, he shot like a three a game, and he hit them. He probably should have shot more. But to me, Michigan State has been in this weird roster spot where they've been building around a point guard who can't really shoot the last three years. They're always playing a center who can't shoot. And if your two, three, and four aren't knockdown shooters, both not shooting, like making them and volume, the team ends up stuck in the half court offense because there's not enough shooting. And Malik Hall was a part of that because he wouldn't shoot a lot of threes. But at least Malik Hall was at the four and you had shooters in theory and Tyson Walker and Aikens at the two and the three. I see this going the wrong direction. Like if Hadley's now going to play the three, and he's a worse shooter or a, a less volume shooter than Malik Hall's been for three years. And Jeremy Fears probably isn't the shooter Hogarth is. And we're still playing no center that can shoot. And is Cohen Carr still in the rotate? Like, we're just stacking up a lot of dudes that do not shoot a lot of threes. And I think it's good he hit 41%. The year before this, he played 565 minutes. Carter, he attempted one three-pointer. Mm-hmm. So he he is not by any means a proven quality shooter, despite that 41% number. To me, he'd almost be a better fit at the four for Michigan State, be like an undersized four and play shooters next to him. But it seems to me like you're getting him to play the three, which would scare me. So the 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 pushback I would do on the Malik Hall versus Javon Hadley thing, and it might not be fair, but and I might be reaching here. So if, if I am, I'm going to ask you just to let me. Okay. When I watch, when I watch Javon Hadley shoot the ball and when I watch Malik Hall shoot the ball, I feel two different things inside me. Well, it's a Malik, prettier jumper. It's a prettier yeah, jumper. Like Malik Hall has that hitch. It, and, and that's kind of why I was like, I, I don't expect him to be, he's not going to, honestly, not, not expect, I don't think he's going to be a 40% three-point shooter. At like in in his career, if he is shooting forty percent, I don't think he's shooting enough. That's the thing. I think he projects more as like a 36 percent guy, and I want him to shoot a lot more. But if I can get Aikens at the two, shooting at a, shooting at a good clip from three, Javon Hadley more attempts shooting at a good clip from three. There's a lot of projecting, obviously, with Hadley, and then I get Booker at the four, who I think can shoot the ball well enough at a solid clip. I kind of like that to get enough shooting. Uh, would I like more shooting? Yeah, uh, I definitely would. Um, but I just don't know. The, the thing is, this would be a lot easier. I would love the Hadley at the four thing if I could trust Book to board the basketball. Like Malik Hall was good on the boards. Honestly, Hadley was actually really good on the boards, better than I expected with six rebounds a game. Um but, you know, I, I think that actually rebound defensively, it could be like some small ball four things with Hadley. But I, I'm doing a little projecting here as far as what his jumper looks like. I would just tell him to shoot the ball more. And I think that it wouldn't be that much of a fall off. Now, if it is, good Lord, we might be bleeped. But uh, I, I think that the more attempts he would be able to, you know, knock. I think he'd knock it down at a decent clip. Okay. Yeah, maybe. Um, I and I want to give him like positive projection. I don't want to project negatively because we don't know what he would look like. Maybe, maybe this is one of those situations where he he needs more shine. He needs more opportunities to do a little more instead of being a fourth option, be a second option. He looks a lot different. Um, with that said, like AJ Hogard made twenty five threes last season. That's four more threes than Hadley has made in his career. A.J. Hogard made 24 threes his junior season. That's three more threes than Hadley has made in his career. A.J. Hogard attempted 72 threes last season. That is 17 more threes than Hadley has attempted in his career. And I get like, again, fourth option, whatever. Maybe he needs the ball more and put him in a better spot. Sure. Also, like on this Colorado team, he was an entirely off-ball player. So Mm. in theory, if you're the fourth option on a team with a couple of NBA ball dominant guys, you're getting kickouts to shoot if you can shoot the ball. (laughs) And to me, the fact that his attempts were so low in a role where he was off the ball is a rather large red flag of maybe this guy isn't the guy we want to shoot the ball four times a game. 
Uh, they really they look my dog. They look they look my dog off, man. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. He uh his tape. I will say there's a lot of Malik Hall vibes in his tape. Like that's obviously a somewhat lazy comp, but like the footwork, the the post scoring, like that stuff. He has a lot of like spinny off balance tough shots that remind you directly of Malik Hall. Yeah, it's like. It, I think I made the comp and didn't didn't like make the comp. It's like he's Malik Hall, but like Malik Hall does this better than Hadley does, and then Hadley does this better than Malik Hall does. So then it kind of just like it, it like cancels out somewhat. Um yeah. I just think the shooting can separate him. Obviously, you gotta see what it looks like. Uh but I never like 40% three point shooters to only have 48 attempts on the season. That's kind of crazy. But also, he, like, wasn't getting a lot. I mean, even if you look at, like, his two-point log, like, he was not – he didn't have many games where he was getting a lot of shots up, to be honest with you. He was – the uh, the attempts were going – I think I saw that he was fifth on the team in field goal attempts. He was behind Simpson, Williams, Silva, and Lampkin, actually. Uh, so, like, yeah, which I don't like. Yeah, no, he definitely wasn't used in that way. Um I would just say like less than 20% of his shot attempts came from three. So I, I don't think it was like, Oh, he wasn't involved. Like he just, that's not his game to me. He, he literally, he played an off ball role on a Colorado team with a bunch of talent and less than 20% of his shots were threes. <laughs> so I, I don't know, maybe Tad Boyle's stupid. I don't know. I, I'm not saying he runs a great offensive system or I know much about it. Maybe he should have been shooting more, but to me that again he didn't even attempt threes until this well, season. So. Well, it, it, well, it, well it's a part of the northeastern path yeah right you gotta yeah. be scared to shoot before you're not scared to shoot you know right it is so can just do what he <laughs> did with tyson walker with him uh if if you are hadley and you had iowa state and michigan state on the table iowa state just took a commitment from a transfer that plays similar position uh would you would you choose iowa state go play for Ots, or would you choose michigan state play for tom Izzo? See, that's an interesting question because do I want to play with better guards? I'm going to Iowa State. But also Iowa State's – like, it, it also depends, like, what Hadley's trying to do. Like, I, I Iowa State's offense isn't necessarily the most fun thing to play in, either is Michigan State's, to be honest with you. Um, personally, I'd probably go to Iowa State if I was him. Uh, even though – it just depends what he's looking for. I think that – he probably right now looking at it would have a bigger role on Michigan State. He would. Just because there's, there's a glaring spot. I think there's 30 minutes for him right now at Michigan State at the three spot if he wants it. Yeah. Um, but also you could play with Lipsy, you could play with Gilbert. He could fit right into that Iowa State team. Iowa State's having a lot of success right now. Uh, you know, I don't know. It's kind of it's I mean, would you say that it's a a sim like a it's not like a a glaring option which school he should go to? No, I think it depends. I think if you if you want to just be a part of a win now team that has a great defensive infrastructure, then yeah, go to Iowa State. Like he he seems like a defensive minded dude. He might just be like drawn to that. Uh, if you want to be a featured offensive role on a program with a history of success, go to Michigan State. Um, I think I, the Tyson and Holloman connections, I think definitely help Michigan stay here. And it's not like an Ots offense is fun to play in. So I don't know. I, I think honestly, honestly, between the two, if I'm Hadley, I probably choose Michigan state. I probably do, um, without knowing what any of the money looks like on either side. But, uh, yeah, players, players like Hadley seem to always want best on court opportunities and it, there's no doubt i don't think there is a program as good as michigan state that can offer him the on on court opportunity michigan state can so whether that leads to being a good basketball team is a totally different question like again i i think you're you're so limited on shooting if that ends up being the team like fears akins hadley booker and a non-shooting center with cohen Carr playing six man minutes is like whoa it's like like terrifying whoa and i know trey trey holloman could fix some of that but yeah 
Yeah, we will. If we didn't add anybody, we'd have to depend on like Tang, Garrick Norman to be the shooters, and who knows what that's going to look like. Yeah, and, I just, and honestly, that's a good shout because if either of those guys are ready to be a rotation player, I feel a lot better about it. But yeah, I, but... Honest, to be honest with you, like just the fact that Cohen Carr is never going to be a shooter is like a big problem here because yeah, you can't really play him with a non shooting point guard and a non shooting center. And now a, a wing that has 50 attempts in his career in three years. Like, so I don't know. I, and for the record, like, I know we're just already going back to this. There's a lot of guys who are like proven shooters in the portal that it just seems like they're not prioritizing shooting as much as they could be. Right. Like there are the, even not, not like big brand name guys, but there are guys who have made like 300 threes in their careers. They could get, we don't want to shoot threes. We'd, that's the take. <laughs> I, I guess. I don't know. Or maybe if they get Hadley, maybe they just don't get a true center. And like Booker plays the five. There's more shooting if that happens. Yeah, that'd be the right thing to do, huh? Not necessarily. I Imagine, okay, if this happened, if you got Booker at the five, Hadley at the three or the four, and then another guy who can shoot at the three or the four, then I love this. Then I love this. And you got fears, shooters at the two, three, four, and even the five with Booker. Yeah. But this. the real issue is that the players on the current team didn't have good enough high school teammates or friends. <laughs> like, why couldn't any of them be friends with Maxime Renaud or like Riley Kugel? Yeah, I blame Tom for sending his son to Lansing Catholic. We haven't had good hoopers in a while. That's on us. Hey, I, anybody out there who wants to know if, Stephen Izzo is a Michigan State legend. Just give him his flowers. I flipped on Stephen Izzo. Why? What happened? We'll talk offline. <laughs> All right. Uh, good luck to Javon Hadley. Excited to see where you end up. And uh, Tom Izzo versus Ots, head to head. Let's arm wrestle for him. There is my bookie. My bookie is our favorite place to place bets. And you can place bets with us. Card, tell the people about my bookie. Let me tell you about my bookie quickly here. It has absolutely everything you need. It has odds, boosts, parlays, expert predictions, alternate lines, anything that you need. My bookie makes it easy to play your way and get paid. And right now we have a first deposit bonus up to $1,000 if you use promo code sleepers. That's promo code sleepers for, I almost messed that up, Greg, but it is promo code sleepers for a first deposit bonus of up to $1,000. The madness is winding down, but there's still plenty of time to get some bets out there. Do so with my bookie, the official sports book of Sleepers Media. Yeah, that's promo code Sleepers, or as Card says, promo code Sleepers. It's <laughs> promo code Sleepers. Uh, thank you, my bookie. Link in the description of this video. Uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching the video.